1993. Since then, he has been a leader in artificial intelligence. Adam is perhaps best known as a co-creator of Siri, the AI that powers the personal assistant, assistant on iPhones. Today, Adam is co-founder and vice president of engineering of Viv Labs. Uh, their AI platform, Viv, has some extraordinary capabilities. It enables users and developers to connect to an intelligent and intuitive conversational interface. Recently, Adam was tapped to be a part of the university's ongoing Optimist campaign and was featured in a discussion on life in the future. Adam said that over the next 20 years, he hopes that we will find better ways of solving global problems. In part, it will be that we develop better and more intelligent tools. But more importantly, it's coming together across borders, collectively talking about our problems, discussing them, and finding solutions. A driver of innovation, an agent for change, and, an, and a UCLA optimist, Adam Shire is the quintessential Bruin engineer. I am absolutely delighted to welcome him to the podium. Adam. Thank you, Dean Murthy, for that very kind introduction. Uh, Dean, members of the faculty, friends, family of our graduates and members of the class of 2017, I want to congratulate you all on the achievement behind this momentous day. You've all worked so hard with commitment, dedication to get to this point and, and you've all contributed. To start, I would like to share something personal about myself. When I was 10 years old, I wanted to be a magician. I'm wearing Hogwarts robes today, so I'm almost there. But why am I telling you this? Uh, it, it'll give you an idea of two important things about myself. First of all, I, early, I learned early that magicians fool people, and it's not all real. And so I've grown up somewhat of a skeptic. If someone were to get up in front of a crowd, maybe a motivational speaker, or a politician, or even sometimes a teacher, and they try to tell me how to live my life, I would not blindly believe them. So in the next few minutes, as I share some of my story, if I perhaps mention something that might have worked out for me, or something I tried, I do not expect you to follow my lead. It's more important that you find your own way through life, your own path. The second aspect that I learned from magic early on is that with enough creativity and invention, anything can be possible. Magicians, on a daily basis, imagine an impossible future and then work backwards from there to figure out how to achieve it. Maybe you could float in the air and jumping rope at the same time. That's been done. I saw someone teleport from place to place on a Broadway stage. Later on in my life, I learned that entrepreneurship is very, very similar. An entrepreneur has to imagine something that does not exist in the world today and then apply science and math and technology to make it come true. As Arthur C. Clarke says, the only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture a little way past that into the impossible. When I go about imagining an impossible future, one thing that I find is I try to visualize what would success mean. Let me give you an example. When I started Siri with a few of my friends, Doc Hitlaus and Tom Gruber, it seemed almost impossible that we would succeed. Nevertheless, we set off and tried to reimagine a mobile experience where you could just ask for what you wanted and automation would happen to make this possible for you. So we, we raised a little bit of money, we started a prototype, we built a small company, and off we went. One day in the early period of this time, 
I went to an Apple store. And inside the store, on the walls, were the logos of all the powerful, successful companies in my field. There was Google, there was Pandora, there was Skype, there was Facebook. And I, in the most ambitious vision I could imagine, I said, someday, on this wall, the Siri logo will be right there with the other hundred icons. It was crazy to me to even imagine it, but I put my heart and my commitment into, into that. So now, fast forward a few years, and Siri's about to ship on the first iPhones. Of course, I had to go to the Apple store to see, like, what's the scene like? Are people buying it? Do they like the experience? And as I walked up to that store, what I, what I saw literally blew me away. Apple had set up a plasma display to look like an iPhone. There was Siri running on a loop. There was a sign saying, introducing Siri. And the juxtaposition of my original crazy vision of wanting to be one icon on the wall, juxtaposed with being the front door of the store, it was like life was reaching out, almost playing a joke on me and saying, see, you tried to imagine an impossible future. I made it came true, and here's even a little bit more. This is something that's happened to me again and again in my life, so I encourage you to try it. When you're, when you're start setting out on a goal, imagine an impossible success and watch what happens. So I managed to get to this, this crazy moment uh, in my time, let me say a few words about how I got there. Um, to many people, Siri came out of nowhere, so fast and easy. And in a way, this is actually true. Our little company launched a free app in the App Store called Siri with 350,000 other apps available. Two or three weeks later, the phone rings at our office. It was an iPhone, of course. And has this ever happened to you when you're trying to answer it? You swipe and it doesn't answer, and you swipe and you swipe. And the caller ID said Apple. Like, after about the sixth or seventh swipe, the phone connects and we hear a voice. Hey, it's Steve. What you doing? Want to come over to my house tomorrow? I mean, this is like an entrepreneur and computer scientist dream. Uh, within a few months, we were on our way, uh, now working with Apple and trying to create a new version of Siri that would ship to hundreds of millions of people. But what most people don't realize is that this, this path, this moment, uh, was not an instant success and did not come without failure. My first version of Siri was in 1993, before most of you in here were born. Uh, I had a tablet PC, not too different from an iPad-like thing. I could use speech recognition, handwriting recognition, typing, and I could communicate with an assistant who would delegate tasks to many services that would appear on the iPhone 18 years later. There was maps and weather and email and restaurants and contacts and, and so forth. In fact, the assistant was how I envisioned the web would be, or what we know as the web today. Because I had done a master's at UCLA, the birthplace of the internet, I knew that there would be computers around the world, and each computer would have its own databases, its own content, its own services, and we would need a way to discover those services from across the computers and to interact with them. And the whole idea of web pages and browsers and search engines, I completely missed that. I thought what you would do is you would talk to the internet and, and ask for things, and it would happen. That's how I imagined it uh, at that time. And over the decades from 1993, I iterated again and again, version after version, failing, learning, improving. And even today, with assistance starting to happen uh, here and there, this vision of a web-scale internet that you can do anything on talking is still unrealized. And it's something that I pursue today at my current company, Viv Labs, 
uh, a quarter of a century later. So sometimes it takes a little longer than you think to make something happen. The earliest roots of this, this assistant vision can actually be traced back right here to UCLA. Remember, my first version was in 1993, and just a few months earlier, I was here graduating on this, this stage, uh, like you are today. Thanks to my coursework, I already knew a little bit about speech recognition, text-to-speech, natural language processing, machine learning. Working on my master's thesis, I started to apply some of these, um, working with a disability group, and we created the first ever screen reader for visually impaired users who were being left behind when the computing world moved from text and DOS to graphical user interfaces. What UCLA education gave me to prepare me for this was know-how in my field from one of the greatest engineering schools in the world, yeah. and practical experience that helped develop my persistence, creativity, and problem-solving skills. These traits are as valuable today as they were back then. And in fact, without getting political, I'd want to say that science and logic and math and a quality education that seeks truth above all is maybe more important now than ever before with all of the global problems we will need to solve in the coming years. I can't wait to see how you're going to use what UCLA has given you through its education as you go forth and change the world uh, in the way that you see fit. As I was graduating here, I realized something very important. And this will be my last little story. The time here on Earth is the most precious gift you will ever be given. Do not waste it. Thank you. So one mantra that I challenged myself with since that time was do more than you think you can do. I'll give you a few examples. When I set about attempting a master's degree at UCLA, I ask myself, rather than do it in a typical two or three years, can you do it in nine months, thesis and all? And I took that on as a challenge. When I started Siri as a company, I did not go with traditional thought, which is focus, focus, focus. I do it my own way. I actually helped start two other companies at the same time. So I was co-founder of Sentient Technologies, which is one of the most important machine learning companies around today. And I was a founding member and first developer at Change.org, which is the world's largest petition platform for good, with more than 180 million members today. People will ask, don't you get overwhelmed? And my answer is, take on a lot, don't feel failure, do your best. If you accomplish, if you go after a far out goal, maybe you don't hit the goal, but by reaching for it, you will accomplish more than taking the easy path. So in sharing some of my stories, perhaps I've given you a few ideas to try out as you venture into this world. Appreciate the gift that is life and make the most of it. Challenge yourself to do more than you think you can. Find your passion and pursue it, perhaps over decades if necessary. Visualize success concretely and watch life surprise you as you exceed even your greatest dreams. And most importantly, do not listen too much to what anyone else tells you. Be a skeptic, chart your own path, and do it your own way. Congratulations to the class of 2017. I celebrate you, your accomplishments, and your exciting future.